Rahayu, Rahayu, Rahayu. 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 Oke, okay, so we are back here in Ngobras. Ngobrol santai bersama Guruji Anand, Anand Krishna. Yeah. Wow. Pranam Guruji, how are you? Rahayu, I'm okay. What about you? Yeah, I'm fine. A little bit nervous because like... No, so today, today our program is different, right? Yes. So we'll be answering questions from our friends. Yes, we'll in, in, um, in, in, in Czech Republic. <laughs> yeah, yes. from An Krishna Center there. Yeah, so who is run by our coordinator there, uh, Sister Petra. Sister Petra. So first of all, we would like to thank Sister Petra, the center coordination in Czech Republic, and also for um, apa namanya, uh, conveying this uh, the questions from our friends there. So Guruji, um, yeah. today it's not only Monday. It's not only Um, Shivling, uh, Shiv Day, mm -hmm. but also it's a day of Holy Festival, the mm -hmm. wow. Festival of Color. So, um, today we will be talking on the topic of Karma, Guruji. Yeah, but first of all, the uh, Festival of Colors, you know, mm. on, on that subject, a little uh -huh. bit, one, two sentences. Okay. Festival of Colors remind us that once you are into spirituality, you have a different aroma. You have a different fragrance, you have a different color. Okay. So maintain that color. There's a beautiful prayer uh, said by the gopis, the friends of uh, Krishna. That color me, O oh Lord, in your color. Yeah. So let me forget my color, my old color. That color is not good. It's black and white. Yeah. So make me colorful now. <laughs> so that's the, the uh, spiritual significance of Holy Festival. Thank you very much, Guruji, for you know a little bit of introduction about the holy festival because like maybe um it's not a common festival that we all celebrate. But also uh, the the meaning behind it is really um, important, mm. Guruji. It's not True. only about playing colors and True. putting colors on True. your friends or your family. Okay, Guruji. So um, we will be moving on to our yes. first question, yes. Guruji. Yeah. So the first question is: What is karma? How can it be transcend, transcended, dissolved, mm. processed? Completed so that we are not bonded by our previous deeds anymore. Shall we want this? Yes, shall we want this? But that is the uh, second part of this question. What is karma? In Indonesia, also in uh, most of European languages, in English for instance, if something bad happens, mm -hmm. you, you, you tend to say, oh, this is your karma. You know? But karma is no, not about the consequence of bad actions. Karma is also the consequence of your good actions. So basically in Sanskrit, karma means action. So karma is neutral, neither bad nor good. We make it bad or good. So karma, we cannot stay without karma. Even when I'm sitting down like this, you're sitting down, we are still doing something. Sitting down itself is a karma, you know. If you sit too long in a day, then you have uh, sititis, sickness, sickness. So everything we do has a consequence. That is the basic principle of karma. If you do good, you get good result, good consequence. If you do bad, you get bad result. And the thing about karma, it is not about five minus three, two. Mm -hmm. You do good things five, and you do three bad things, so five minus three, you still have two left over in your bank account. Mm -hmm. Suppose you have 500,000 rupiah in the bank, or $100, whatever it is, and you have spent $300, so you still have some $200, right? In the karmic principle, it is not like that. For each and every dollar that you spend, you get the result. If you spend wisely, you get good result. You spend not wisely, you get bad result. And so you do something good, you get good result. You do something bad, bad result. 
So there is no plus and minus. Everything is intact. Bad begets bad. Good begets good. That is karma. What is the second part of the question? What How can it be dissolved, processed, completed so that we are not bound by our previous deeds anymore? It's very difficult. Very difficult. How can we free ourselves because our birth this time? You are born in a certain family, I am born in a certain family. We get certain education, we are born in a different country. All these things are based on our past karmas. You cannot just uh, dissolve it like that, you know. But what you can do is make the best of it. So suppose my, my, my master used to say, suppose you have been doing bad karmas and I have been doing bad karmas and I have to walk under the, uh, under the sun. I'm not talking about the European sun, but the Indonesian sun, where it can be very, you know, very hot and all that. So if you have to walk for, say, five kilometers or two kilometers, whatever, under a hot sun, which is not good, not good here in this country. I mean, we are having summer all year round, you know. So we are not used to that kind of sun, 40 degrees or 42 degrees. So, what is the grace of God? What is, uh, what is the intervention of the divine? It's not to dissolve, but to give you an umbrella so you can protect yourself. So the journey which is not so pleasant can become pleasant. Now, there's a question there that should we want to dissolve it? Should we want to transcend it? It depends on what kind of life path we have chosen. I always remind you all about what Buddha said. If you have chosen to live spiritually 100%, then you have to break the bridges that is connecting you with your past life. The bridge has to be broken. So you don't go back, you know, there's no bridge. But if you still want to you know, remain the world and you want to uh, pursue spirituality as your hobby. Many people do that. Yes. Yeah. Or even your profession. People, people teach yoga and they feel that this is a profession. So they are not <coughs> into it as a spiritual, as a spiritual sadhana. Sadhana means uh, full time living meditatively full-time, 24-7. If you're not into that, then uh, it's okay. It's okay. But if you want to live meditatively 24-7, then you have to, you have to decide for yourself whether you want to keep the bridge still intact so that you can go back anytime or you want to break the bridges. Buddha spoke about breaking the bridges. It's, it's, it's a, our choice. Should we want it? Do we want it? Totally our choice. There is no, no such thing as if you don't live spiritually 24-7, you go to hell. No. You are not condemned. And if you do something good, you go to heaven. No. No. It's all here. Whatever you do, you get the result here only. If you don't get the result here now, then maybe you take birth again to, to carry on your, your karmic thing. But uh, yes, it is again, once again, it is your choice. There is no such thing as, as a threat of uh, hell that you'll be you know, burning in the hell for, for hellfire forever or for eternity. Or you'll be living in... Uh, in, in the heavens, no, not like that. We have to decide for ourselves. Thank you very much, Guruji, yeah. for the explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to um, re making it clearer because, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, before you was mentioning about uh, the Buddha, where mm -hmm. he burned all the bridges. bridges yeah. So, does it the only way to you know um, cutting down? Or uh, I mean, like you can proceed to the next level and then not making any more karmas and also does it mean that 
karma bad or good is fully our control is fully under our control Guruji. yes fully under control and if you are doing karma for you individually then you are responsible for it yes. now what is spirituality let me at the offset let us you know understand this spirituality is not withdrawing from the world it's living in the world but in a detached manner okay you know when you are when you are uh, praying to god how do you pray some people pray give me this give for me that for the material things, material things worldly world worldly things for uh, to have a mate to have a, you know any 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 a job job comforts comforts yes you know, position so that your life is comfortable you know and when a spiritual being a spiritual person prays he prays loka samasta sukhino bhavantu may people of all the worlds not only one world but all the worlds how many ever worlds there are how many ever uh, planets Universe. there are universes universes there are all the beings may they be happy so there is a difference there when we are talking about individual benefit then we suffer individually also <laughs> but once you pray for the benefit of all then you are automatically you are actually already cutting the bridges so in sanatan dharma in the ancient wisdom it is always prayer is always to extend your gratitude for all the blessings that you have got and about sharing your blessings it's not about me 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 but it's about we 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 so law of attraction says i have made so much now tomorrow i'll make so much and you know i'll imagine dollars and dollars will fall from the ceiling and all that it doesn't happen that way okay guru ji thank you very much because like um now it's clear that it's mm-hmm. the karmas how we count it how mm-hmm. it be count is not like um 3 minus uh, no 5 yeah. minus 3 is 2 but mm-hmm. we never know how it works for each works. and everything you have to yes. face the consequence and also um it's a very i think it's a very interesting topic mm-hmm. because like in the mm-hmm. not only in the spiritual world we are talking about karmas but also in the media social yeah. guruji there are you know like feeds a post mm-hmm. that are talking about the karmas instant mm-hmm. karma and all that yeah so is it there guruji like instant karma you know yes there are trees you know sometime you 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 plant a seed and within days you get the fruit within days the plant can grow you know and then there are seeds like mango mango tree in, in indonesia it may take years before it bears fruit so some karma will not bear fruit immediately and some karmas can bear fruit immediately so when you see okay somebody is not honest somebody is not what somebody is not what and yet he seems to be uh, you know uh, happy and all that it's just a matter of time because if you sow a tamarind seed you cannot expect mango tree so whatever you have sown you reap the same the same uh, Uh, fruit even though berries are berries but if you plant uh, seeds of strawberry you cannot get blueberries or blackberries although they they belong to the same family so every act every individual act bears fruit here is um another question please. yes maybe like um nowadays mm-hmm. what is happening is that um uh, whenever you are uh, into some trouble or mm-hmm. you know some mm-hmm. situation and then the other person would say that uh see this is your instant karma this is what you have read and all that but guruji um as what you said before 5 minus 3 is not always to like that in karma mm. so is it our duty to you know um judge or to remain or even to um remind ourselves that maybe this is our karma or should we think even even think about it that yeah. this is my karma we should think about it but at the same time we should not be disheartened mm-hmm. if bad things happen to us we should not be disheartened 
if bad things happen to us, it is because of me. There is no such thing as God judging me. No. There is no such thing in the, in the, in the tradition, the ancient tradition, ancient wisdom. There is no super God who is, you know, judging each and every account, you know. No. You are doing your own accounting. You are doing your own bookkeeping. God is the eternal observer. He is just observing the play. Okay? His intervention is only when we are trying to do something for which God wants us to do. And that is to serve society, to serve humanity. Then there is a grace factor. Otherwise, we are responsible for our own lives. I think that's one, another yeah. important point that is, it's not only, uh, it's not always God mm. because of God, but because of my own deeds and because True. as what we said, it's fully on, under our control, True. everything that we True. do. Okay. Um, anyone want to ask something? Yeah. Okay. Rayu Guruji, yeah. uh, if karma is about action and deeds, and how about, how about our intention? Maybe someone uh, do a good deeds and action, but have a bad intention. Is it possible? And how is karma yes. works on that? Yes, Thank but you. karma theory is not based on intention alone. Because karma means action. Okay? I may have a bad intention. I may have a very bad thought about you. But am I translating that bad thought into action? As long as it is my thought, my thought will trouble me. There is a karma there. Yeah. Mental karma, emotional karma, you know. We are troubled by our own thoughts. Like I, I, I have a problem with somebody. My thoughts are bothering me. Whenever I see this person, I am bothered. There is my problem. Yeah, there is my problem. I have to work on that also. And it happens to anybody. But it does not become karma because there is no action. Karma is only when there is an action. You have intention and you have action. If it is just intention, you can reverse the intention. Mm, reverse the intention. Yeah. I may have a bad intention, but immediately I can, I can do some self-introspection and I may try to find out a solution. Okay, why I have this bad intention? Okay, what to, do, what to do about it? How to go about it? So that I don't trouble anybody with my intention and nobody gets trouble with my intention. So I can reverse it easily at that point. And yoga says, Patanjali says, even before a thought appears, chitta, the core of the thought, the core of the mind, if you can change it at that point, you are happier. So intention, we all have bad intention. We cannot be free of intention. Every time we have bad thoughts, bad emotions, bad feelings, the whole day, the whole day around you go and meet people, you meet with situation, but not all those things are karma. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, so it's not only about our action, but also we have to control our mind, Guruji. Oh yes, because action is uh, outcome of our mind, whatever we think, whatever we, we, we feel. But if we can control at that point and they don't become action, then we are not into karmic uh, cycle. Yeah. Okay, so let me proceed yeah. to the yes. second question, yeah. Guruji. The second question is, what should be our aim, objective in life regarding karma? Shall we want to sur surpass it or go beyond karma and be liberated from it, or is it desirable to be born again? It depends. Again, it depends upon us. You want to be born again? Fine. The God, God is just watching us. It is all His play, you know. In the ancient wisdom, in Sanatana Dharma, what we call Sanatana Dharma, God is the dancer. Okay, and we are the dance. So he's he's all right, you know. Sometimes the steps are wrong. It is his his dance, you know. We cannot judge also. We don't we, even know. We don't even it's, know. It's wrong. We don't know. We don't know. We feel that we know. Uh -huh. okay. 
we feel, oh, this is my choice, this, 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 this. Actually, this is dense. So, he's all right. He's all right. So, he's just eternally dancing, like Shiva, you know, yeah. eternally dancing. Now, mind is creating separation. Our mind is creating separation. How to explain that? Suppose someone is dancing, okay? And he's dancing or she is dancing on the ground that is uh, sandy with sands all over. And so the sand is, uh, you know, what do you call it? Sand are, are spreading here and there, you know. That is our mind. That is our mind. But for God, it is just a dance, it is a leela, it is just a game. So if we want to continue coming back to this this planet or go to other planets, it's all right with him, with her. God can be, she can be, he can be anything. But we never know that we will be reborn as a human being, right? So, I mean, like, now we are presently as a human being and we can, you know, have control in our deeds and mind. So, does it, you know, this is better? The, true. This is the only birth we have got where we can pause and think. Yeah. We, can be, we can be responsive. When we are born as other species of animals, we are reactive. Mm -hmm. We feel hungry, we just eat food. We feel thirsty, have a drink. We feel uh, like mating, we have sex, you know. But as a human being, we are given this neocortex. Animals don't have it. We are also animal, mm -hmm. but we are perhaps the only animal having this neocortex. Other animals, they don't have the neocortex. So there, this neocortex is making us, enabling us to think, pause, and then decide what do you want to do. What do you want to do? Animals don't have it. So if you are born as a human being, I am born as a human being, let us make the best of it. Thank you, Guruji. Um, anyone would like to ask question? Okay. Thank you, Guruji. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you ever mentioned that the one who was born in 1975, um, around 1975, will have a uh, bare fruit instantly in this lifetime. Uh, would you please to elaborate more on this, Guruji? And then... Um, you have mentioned in one of your book that in this period, the karmic cycle is moving instantly or uh, faster. Or fast, faster, yes. Faster. So we can get the result very fast. Yes, that is true. Because there are uh, yugas, there are different uh, periods of time. And sometimes, just time is relative, okay? Albert Einstein said that. So when you're happy, your time looks very short, you know. But when you're sad, time feels so long, you know. You just, you just now think, how many really, really, really sad things have happened in your life? You can count them. But whenever you're going through those sad passages of time, you feel like it's unending, you know. Yes. Why is this happening to me? What is this? What is what? What is what? And when good things are happening, <laughs> we don't we, we forget. How many good things have happened in our life? We have forgotten. How many people have helped us in spite of not even knowing us? We are not even grateful. We are not even having any gratitude. But anybody doing anything bad, just a small thing, we feel it. We feel it. So, that is, that is a thing. That is a thing. So, because of that, now, the time circle, although we have 24 hours time cycle, but in the ancient wisdom, time is not calculated by, 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 by fix fix uh, timing, what you call this uh, time structure. So, one day can be 24 hours, one day can be 36 hours, one day can be 12 hours. It depends on 
It depends on how you live your life. Oh, and on the quality. Depends on the quality of life. So, you decide even on your life, about your life, how you want to live. Everything is our decision, our mental, emotional decision. Wow. <laughs> Hmm. Hi, Guruji. Just wondering when you told me that, uh, it was that why we always remember just only the sad things in our life. You hmm. know, it is something in our brain that psychologically they told us also about. You are psychologist. No, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that's why psychology always that. Uh, unfortunately, we all, apa, always only remember the the bad things and the sad things in our life. Why is it something in our brain? Yeah, there? it is. It is our brain. It is our brain. We are we are uh, set. We are like an autopilot, you know, autopilot. autopilot. And you you just see. We just came back from Japan, and you see there we saw one small girl or small boy, small child. Yeah, and uh, the father was there, the mother was there, family was there, and this child was uh, what do you call it in the in English language? Playing something like, playing something in the garden, and he fell down, and the mother was the father was just looking at him, and this child does not cry and does not do anything. Did he cry? Slight. Slightly, yeah. Yeah. And then he got up by himself. The father did not even help him to get up. He got up by himself, and he's all right. And here in Asia. If somebody, a child falls, yeah. oh, this is jihad, you know. Yes. This ground is evil. Yes. <laughs> That's why you have fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you did you hit the ground and say, this evil. And the child is brainwashed to believe that the ground is evil. So I'm not falling because of my mistake. I was not being careful. It is because the ground is evil. I'm suffering not because of my mistake, but because that person is bad. Back again about the education, yeah, Guruji. You see, in Japan, there's another thing. If I have to describe in one line, 1975, 76, I was in, in Japan. Now, almost 50 years, I'm back in Japan. And that idea of gratefulness, gratitude, yeah, still there intact with all the generation, 50 years already, two, three generations. Yes. Two, three generations. With all the generation gap, with all the technological development, mm -hmm. I was just uh, passing through the passage where you know there's a kitchen and the from the flight, there's a kitchen where uh, pantry, not kitchen, of course. And these two girls were there, two artists were there. One was senior, one was junior, and nobody was watching them. I, you know, I was passing through. That's why I saw. I didn't purposely watch them. They still did the same thing that 50 years ago they would be doing. You know, Ngangu Kapala bowing down to each other, you know, thank you, blah, 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 blah. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Development is there, this is there. When we checked in hotel, four-star hotel, the person who received us, the reception, only one person, we, we reached there about what time? It's, um, it's midnight. Midnight. One person, and it's a very cold night. One or two persons, yeah. Only one. Only one. Old man, yes. 60 plus. Elderly. He does not use computer, no laptop, <laughs> writing. Wow. Japan. Wow. And here we cannot work without laptop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we thought that we are more smart. Yeah. More sophisticated. When, <laughs> we're sophisticated when we use And that. this man is perhaps retired from somewhere, yeah. 60, 65 maybe. And he's still working at night. And writing with hand, everything is handwritten, even our lock key, a key and everything, all handwritten, not computerized, nothing. So things are, I mean, for them, time is time. What were we discussing about? <laughs> <laughs> time, time is uh, there, but you know, they, they value those, those uh, ancient traditions which we have forgotten. Okay, Guruji. So, mm -hmm. um, before you mentioned that um, sometimes we f we unconsciously we got flowing with the time and all mm -hmm. that. 
but at the same time we have to proceed to the you know to the next level where we improve our life guruji mm. so does it mean that um you know sometimes we'll we'll say like um okay now in in the in the present at the present moment we got you know flowing with the you know the emotions like maybe anger or something and then afterwards you know maybe few days later we regret, we regret and then we realize that oh i shouldn't do that like that but at the same time we say it's okay i'm still learning so it's no problem is that okay or we have to be strict at all time we have to be ourself. abc abc my guru always says abc always be careful okay okay but if you cannot be careful always learn to say sorry but genuinely If I have done something wrong, then I must say sorry genuinely, not just basa basi, not just for the sake of formality. You know, oh, I have to say sorry. There are people who are just used to saying sorry. <laughs> for them, sorry is a you know, is a common word. So they they don't mean it. They just say sorry. So we have to genuinely say sorry. Okay, I have done mistake. Say sorry, and move on. And Like Jesus said to to this woman who was uh, being stoned for adultery, your sins have been forgiven, and sin. The word sin, in Sanskrit, is not something like uh, sin, but it is called dosh. It is a mistake. So if you use the the terms in Sanskrit, your mistakes have been forgotten, they are forgiven, but mistake no more. Go and sin no more. So the second line we keep forgetting. Forgiven, we understand, we are happy, you know. But the second line we keep forgetting that I am responsible for my action now. Now I've been told that this was a mistake, and I should not repeat it again. Okay, uh, one question, yeah. Guruji. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if uh, we are forgiven, but mm-hmm. our mistake, we truly, uh, generally, we are asking about the forgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but how about the karma itself, Guruji? Same thing. If you are generally asking, generally, yeah. you are uh, you are saying it out. That mm-hmm. is karma already. Oh, it's. I think. Re- I mean, uh, you know, we have. We don't have to pay, but I mean, we don't have to receive anything. So. And if you don't, you don't make the same mistake. Oh, okay. Then there is a uh, certain discounts given. You cannot be free. Uh, nothing is no free lunches, but certain discounts are always there. But at there. least, yeah, at least the discount fifty percent. Thank you, Guruji. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's mm. something. Yes. Like maybe it's a serious personal yeah. question, Guruji. Yeah. Like uh, <laughs> I ever, I mean, like uh, it happens to me is that like sometimes, most of the time, I not I didn't even realize like. What I did was a mistake. So and sometimes, like, yeah, of course, luckily I have you to remind me that you have done this, 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 that is wrong. But what about the people who is, uh, you know, not having, you know, someone to remind them to think, tell them? I think there's a question about that. But let me reply to you. There's a question there in the, that list when I saw it. So the question is, uh, sorry. When we are not, you know, realize you don't realize that, that and nobody, it nobody's there mistake. to guide you. What you did was a mistake. Yeah, and nobody is there to guide you. Yeah. Yes, so in that case, you are in the karmic circle. If there is no intervention, mm-hmm. and you are born in a family like that, or you are born in an environment more than family environment, that's more important than family even. If you live in an environment where Where these kind of mistakes are not considered mistakes, mm-hmm. then you are subject to karma. So it's a very important thing, you know, to um, learn from the smallest thing that we got from everywhere, because True. like, <coughs> you know, we never know mm-hmm. which one is actually mm-hmm. guiding us. Maybe True. it just bumped into you, you know, from nowhere. Whoever teaches you to be. Loving towards all, mm-hmm. not love that is cinta monyet or <laughs> flirting or infatuation, you know, not that kind of love, but genuinely loving, having compassion for everybody, that is the right teaching. If somebody is just telling you how to make money, 
He is a good teacher maybe, but he is not a guru. He is not a sadguru. That's it. Love all. No, serve all. Serve all. That's it. <laughs> However, hurt never. Hurt never, yes. Yeah, at least try. You know, my guru used to say, even if you cannot speak sweetly with everybody, at least speak obligingly, you know. Have some sweetness, some kind of sweetness in your voice. Naino me premadar, vachano me amradar, sadguru sai, mera jeevan adar. Naino me premadar. Have love, have compassion in your eyes. Vachano me amradar. Your words should be giving life to people. Amrit, you know. Should be giving life to people, not, not uh, making them suffer. And you always have your guru or your ishta or your chosen deity, whether it is Jesus or it is Rama, Krishna, whoever, Allah, whatever. You have that deity in your heart always. Have that, have that as your soul guide. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the biggest tasks, yeah. hardest tasks that I'm still working on. No, it is not big task, you know. <laughs> when you're in love with someone, everything becomes so easy. But my mind used to be cloudy when it's, you know, reacting. No, if, you're in, if you're truly in love, you'll <laughs> shoot your own mind. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> shoot your own mind, you know. What is there? The song. <laughs> Emperor Wu Emperor goes to Bodhidharma and says, my mind is troubling me. He said, no problem, come at 12 o'clock midnight. Yeah. So Emperor Wu comes at 12 o'clock to see Bodhidharma and said, my mind is troubling me. He said, give me your mind, let us kill. <laughs> How do I give you my mind? <laughs> mind is subtle, mind is abstract. So he said, mind is not there. If it is there, you give it to me, I'll kill it for you. So mind is shadow. Mind is, you believe that there is a mind. <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> wow, <good one. laughs> okay. Can 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 yes please. Okay. Uh, this for our dedicated our friends in uh, Czech Republic, yeah. Okay. Let me introduce. Uh, this is a song titled Wah Guru. Kivadiya teriya mere sat guru jiyo Kivadiya teriya mere sat guru jiyo Peer da mah peer tu hai Fakar awal fakir tu hai Hasavi tu meer tu hai Rooda asal shareer tu hai Sab bina da veer tu hai Shuru tu akheer tu hai Wah guru wah 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 wah Guru Rukhvi tere patte tere Mehna saari chatte tere Rukhvi tere patte tere Mehla saari chatte tere Fake tere ratte tere Rang saari katte tere Tu kan kan vich kan kan tera Sat hi surne saathe tere Wah guru wah wah Guru Wawa, Guru Wawa, Guru Wawa, Guru Wawa, Guru Wawa, Guru Wawa, Guru. Har tanu asatar bani dinda. Kul sapna di jane dinda. Sutar baane ninda, full sabna di jaane ninda. 
की गवा तेरी मेहम सत गुरु हर एक चुंजनू दाने दिंदा पक तेरे कच्छ तेरे जूत तेरे सच तेरे सानू पण लगद सत गुरु असी अनजाने बच्चे तेरे वाह गुरु आवा 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 गुरु you know, the beautiful line in that song is uh, whether ripe or unripe you love both you equally love both so i'm reminded of uh, practice in punjab especially this song was in punjabi language there they used to make this uh, achar pickle mango pickle right so the ripe mangoes are eaten consumed as fruit but there are certain uh, species in the mangoes which do not get ripe and they are unripe they are very sour so they make achar out of it and both are equally good you know mangoes as fruit good and unripe mangoes as achar is good as pickle is good you know but there's a big but there if the mango is rotten you cannot do anything then that mango has to be thrown it has to go through the recycle process now in our daily life in our organization institutions there always this possibility of having rotten mangoes and if you mix this one rotten mango in a big jar or pickle they make pickle for one year two years you know they can last for that long with mustard oil just one pickle 50 pickles can be good one sorry 50 mangoes can be good unripe all 50 unripe but one unripe rotten mango can kill all the 50 can spoil all the 50 so then we have to let go of that that rotten mango not because it is unripe but because it is rotten Thank you Let's very continue. much. <laughs> Let's move on to the third yeah. question. Why might someone who has reached enlightenment and profound awakening still choose to remain entangled within societal structures they perceive as flawed rather than stepping out to become the guiding light, the beacon of change for others to follow? Enlightenment is a process. So I cannot say that I am enlightened. If I say I am enlightened, that means I am putting a stop in the, pro- the process. There is no possibility for me to grow. And once you are in the process of getting enlightened, you will not be able to stop yourself from guiding others. It becomes very natural. So, whether you are stepping out of your world or no whether you are still in a business or you are full time dedicated to to bringing about consciousness bringing about awareness it's based on your karma your so many factors are at play so we cannot really decide for others that he should do this or do that what we can do is uh, induce them persuade them whatever we can do to show them that there is a possibility of life that is not just an ordinary life mm. you are not born and die as in sex you are not born and die as any other species of animals but you are born for a different different goal now whether you want to pursue that goal while still being part of the world doing your profession or no it depends on you the process of enlightenment can go on 
those who are pursuing both the world and enlightenment, maybe they are going slow, maybe they are going slow. And those who are dedicated to the cause, maybe they are going faster. But once again, uh, my personal feeling is that enlightenment is a lifelong process. So I cannot say that I'm already enlightened, but you know, like you're, you're driving a car, okay? You're driving a car and your headlights are on. Now headlights are on because of what? You want to help your car, you want to help yourself. So you don't make mistake. So you don't, uh, you don't get into accident, yeah? But using your headlight, others can benefit also. They also can see the road. Mm -hmm. So you're actually not sharing, it becomes very automatic. Natural. You're natural, it's natural. Yeah. I wrote this in my first book, Life, you know. Mm -hmm. That becomes so natural that without even you considering it anything, you're actually helping others already, you know. Mm -hmm. By putting your headlights on, by driving carefully, you're also helping others. So it's a crystal clear explanation about the enlightenment, yeah. Guruji. I yeah. don't have any question, but maybe yeah. our friend. Yeah. Guruji, how about um, our beloved that already passed away mm. in our tradition, ancient tradition, that we can do a good deeds, good action in the name of our beloved that already passed away. Mm. So uh, how does it work for them? If the person is uh, dead with some kind of confusion, then that confusion can be resolved. Because confusion is mental, it's not physical. And the mind is intact. When you are dying, when you, you, you die, we die. Most of the time, if we are not into the process of enlightenment, or we are not up to certain, certain stage, then the mind is intact. So if the mind is intact, mind is still attached to the world. So our prayers, our uh, you know, good deeds, whatever we do in the name of the diseased, can help them, can help her or him to move on. Okay, now I have already left the body, and there's no point for me to be attached, to remain attached to this world. Let me move on. That much. You know, it doesn't cancel anything, but at least the, the process can be smoothened. Mm. Okay, Guruji, yeah. so um, let Yes. Moving on to the question number four. Is it our karma that other people can feel or perceive from us or we can feel from other people? If yes, can or shall we use this to decide who we shall keep in our lives? Yeah, I think that that, that is uh, very personal and uh, <coughs> And we, we have to really take care of, of the circle we are moving in. Yeah. My master used to say, and that is also said by somebody else also, in different words, you know. You give me five names. Who are your best friends? Mm -hmm. And from those five names, I can tell you your character. Yes. Because you'll be attracted only to those who are sharing the same thoughts, same emotions with you. So, more than your parents, more than your father, more than your mother, more than your sibling, the environment and the friendship circle is, can be more dangerous, can be more helpful. Okay. So you have to be very, very careful about with whom you are moving and all that. Did that answer the question? Yeah. Yes, I think so. So, um, but also Guruji, mm -hmm. are we responsible for their karmas or part of no, them? We are not responsible for anybody's karma, but we are actually bearing the fruits of our karmas. Okay, if we are just pursuing our karma from our past life, those people who did harm to you in your past life, who were not helpful to you in your spiritual path, will again be there in this life. Will be there in this life, you know. And then, 
if there is a divine intervention, somebody is telling you, look, this circle is bad for you. You have gone through the same process before. And you are getting those flashes, perceptions, like perceive, you know. You are getting those flashes, okay, yes, these people I met before. Maybe you don't remember the whole story. But you are getting, you definitely get those flashes, you know. So once you get that flashes and you perceive that these people are not helpful for me, you must immediately cut down. My master used to always tell us, learn to say bye after hi. Don't continue, you know. You don't have to hate them. They are working on their own karma. If you are not attracted, they are pulling you, okay? They are pulling you down. But if you stay on your own ground, you can, you can uh, refuse their pull. You can say no to them. Okay, I have done, we have been having some kind of relationship in the past, but now no more, that's it. So um, it's a clear conclusion that we are not responsible for others' karma. We Never. are only um, responsible for our karmas because uh, karma is all about what we did. True. It's about what, uh, our action, what True. we are uh, doing. So we are not responsible for others. And True. also we have to control our um, surroundings. Yeah. And we are having the full uh, power, full control of, uh, for it, because uh, no matter what kind of relation it is, it's either it's our parents mm. or mm. our best friend maybe or yeah. our mates, yeah. if they're Anybody. not helping us to grow, so we can just say bye to them. Yeah. yeah. And we have to be courageous. To, <laughs> to be bold, that's what, that's <laughs> what my, my tagline used to be there, be bold, be courageous and be brave, you know. Because like, because Guruji mm -hmm. nowadays is that, um, especially for the soulmates and all mm -hmm. that, what we feel like they're our, you know, partner in life and whatever is that, is that um, they think, even though they know that they are being, you know, toxic to, you know, they're in a toxic relationship, mm -hmm. um, they're afraid to cut it down because like, they feel like if I'm not with him mm -hmm. or with her anymore, mm -hmm. I cannot, you know, pr um, you know, yeah. live my life. Live my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I'm scared to be alone without them. Like, it's gonna be a really miserable days that it's, I'm gonna spend it, without it, it, them. It simply means that you do not believe. Such people, such people who have such thoughts, they do not believe in the existence, in the kabijakan, the rikabradyan, in the wisdom of existence. How were you born? You were born alone. How was I born alone? Mm -hmm. I was not born with my soulmate. If my soulmate was supposed to be with me, then we'll be born as twins. And we'll be loving each other. And like Walt Disney's movies, we'll be, you know... Be <laughs> Happily ever Happily after. Ever after. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. It only happens in the Walt Disney movie. Uh -huh. You know, all these uh -huh. stories, uh -huh. all the fairy tales, you know, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, uh, kissed her and then she got up and finally you know, they met and happily lived ever after. Never! They don't dare to write what happened after that, you know. The, the story is halfway, not even halfway, it is 50, 25 percent of the story. They never tell us that what happened after that Sleeping Beauty was kissed, fine, she got up, fine, she was dead for so many years, or sleeping so many years. Then what happened? Did they, did they really live happily ever after? Or did they break off? Or did they divorce each other? They don't tell you the story. <laughs> Okay. So, um, Guruji, mm -hmm. for uh, maybe our friends or yeah. our, the elders who yeah. are already in the, you know, married life mm -hmm. so is it that that they have to you know separate from each other or no, they can work together <laughs> no they can they can work together but nobody is nobody is responsible for somebody else mm -hmm. okay even husband wife they can be very loving to each other but still on spiritual path everybody has to walk alone I used to tell everybody who came to our ashram in the beginning, I used to remind them every time, 
we have to remove our shoes outside, right? And mm -hmm. then you come to the meditation hall. So I always told them, plus your shoes, except your shoes, beside your shoes, you also leave behind all your relationship. Oh. Even if you're coming with your spouse, your husband, your wife, your children, when you're in the hall, you're individual. I will be talking to you individually, not as a wife or so-and-so or husband or so-and-so. And yeah, we keep on reminding ourselves that everybody is responsible for his or her own action. Thank you very much, Rajin. Yeah. I agree. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for... <laughs> uh, honestly, I really understand about the karma from you uh, mm -hmm. when I'm beginning... Uh, in psychology, uh, in they in don't teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in my, uh, you know, my past. According to your explanation about the if we do uh, like accounting, you know, five uh, the yeah, good, good things, things and three bad things. Three bad things, uh, you still win. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't happen <laughs> like that. It doesn't happen that way. This one now, since um, uh, I understand about the karma itself, so we, for me, I become more responsible about the right. things that we do. Mm -hmm. Because anything that we do, there is a consequences. True, yeah? true. Uh, yeah, last time maybe when we are teenage, uh, mm -hmm. if we do something, no, 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 I didn't do that, <laughs> something like yeah, that. Yeah, for yeah. example, if you go to the restaurant, right? Yeah, ngaku ya, waktu masih muda. Ada istilah, oh no, there is a sentence in the uh, Dharmaji in uh, Sundanese, dahar lima ngaku hiji, gitu ya. What is that? You take five, but you come, only take one when you do in the, <laughs> yes, in the uh, uh, Dharmaji from, 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 from like, Sundanese. Um, huh? When we are, uh, when you do, uh, go to, uh, and yeah, go to, so you first sorry, you just sorry, take, yeah, you, you take? first take, and then you will pay later. Yeah. Oh, so you take. sometimes people happen to like they took five, but they when they are one. yeah they just pay one. No, I just I take one. one. Yeah. So this is not Dharmaji that we met. No. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Dharmaji. <laughs> so you In take Japan, five. And <laughs> you admit that you only take one when you are in high school. Yeah, remember that. So please put yeah. insert the picture of Dharma there. <laughs> <laughs> Dharma in Japan. But now, since I know about this karma, and, uh, this is yeah. very changed the, our, uh, you know. The, the, uh, do you already count everything there? Because I don't want to, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very good for the, actually, for the world itself. Otherwise, it's a, it's a pure, you know, I keep uh, somebody was and uh, not supposed to eat pork or not supposed to eat beef or not supposed to eat uh, chicken or whatever it is, yeah? And then we went to Nepal, and uh, meat was served. Yeah. They didn't have enough vegetables. Mm -hmm. And especially this meat that this person is not supposed to eat, yes. that particular meat. Yeah. The belief system says you cannot eat. So, mm -hmm. No, no, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when this person, the waiter is serving, he somehow knew that this lady belongs to this certain belief system. Yeah. You were there, I think. Yeah, I <laughs> You were there, yes. And he keeps reminding, yeah. this is this, yeah. this meat. Yeah. The and the waiter was trying to remind yeah. every time, so many times. But the person who wants to eat that meat, <laughs> looking here, looking there, <laughs> looking everywhere, <laughs> as if didn't hear. So, okay, fine. And uh, she ate. Yeah. And after the thing was over, and I didn't want to bother her. Yeah. She ate finally. Then we went out of the restaurant. I said, you know, the, that meat was yeah. this meat. He said, but I didn't know, I didn't hear. <laughs> so, yeah, I heard that. So you, you knew that, right? So yeah. you know the, the person also. Yes. Anyway, so this is like uh, saying ignorance is bliss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretend to. Pretend to. But ignorance, it, even if you are ignorant, yeah, if you are not, if you are, say you are, you are um, my, my, my master say you are electrician. You're an electrician and you have a technical degree, whatever degree, you know, electric engineering or technical engineering, whatever it is. You put your hand, the stop contact in the, what do you call it? Yeah. What do you the call it? Yeah. You get the short circuit. You get, you get electrocuted. The socket does not understand that you have passed BA or <laughs> MA. Or <laughs> <laughs> so whether you are ignorant, you are not, you are, you are wise. Karma is karma. It's karma is karma. It's so good. Yeah. yeah, because uh, if we, everybody knew about that, you don't have to like, okay, it's okay, like, we do some bad things, because bad things, because I will do 
a good thing, yeah. If you go to somewhere, so plus minus. There's five times, yeah. There's plus minus. I still have many. And also sin laundering. Sin if laundering. If you believe, yeah, yeah that's If what you I believe mean. in so and so, all your yeah. sins will be washed away. Yes, true. So you can do it again because you have a sin laundry like that. Yeah, but this the person does not say that. Jesus never said that that I'll take up your, all your sins. Jesus said, "You sow, you reap what you have sown." Apa yang kau tanam, kau akan menghasilkan itu. Tanam tuai. Tanam tuai. But we forget what Jesus said. We remember what others say. And most of us. Yeah, when Jesus was being crucified, he even complained to God. God, God, what is that? Why have you forsaken me? So Jesus, Khalil Gibran was the person who remember who who knew Jesus. His book on Jesus is called Son of Man. Jesus, son of man, he was an ideal man. Whether we believe in him, God, I believe in him as a Lord, but that is irrespective of that. He really lived like an ideal man that we can relate with. If he's God, then you cannot relate with God. God can do anything. God is Almighty, but here is a man who that you can relate with, and you can follow him. God, you cannot follow. How can you follow God? God is not going anywhere. God is everywhere, but this man Jesus is walking, and he's telling you, "Come and follow me, and bring your own cross, carry your own cross." We don't want to carry our own cross because we are taught, and it's easy to believe in Jesus who has forgiven us, who is carrying our cross and being crucified. More easier, but easier. Jesus said, "You carry your own cross." We say, "Okay, you carry my cross." But I've always thought like that. Always thought like that. Sin laundry. <laughs> Again, same. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, next, next one. question. Yeah. Next question, Guruji. Thank you. How does the karma work if someone turns evil against himself? For example, in the case of a suicide, what happens to such act after the death? Is there still possibility for the rebirth? Oh yes, but this has to wait. Like you know, if I'm supposed to live in this life, in this in this particular body for let's say eight years, yeah, and I break it up when I'm fifty years old and I commit suicide, you know, so for thirty years, the soul will be hovering mm -hmm. and in pain, and that's what we call hell, hellish experience. Because now the soul realizes that I made so many mistakes, mm -hmm. and he wants the tool. This body is like a tool. Mm -hmm. You can use this body as a tool to undo your mistakes, mm -hmm. to rectify your mistake. Mm -hmm. Now, when the soul is does not have the body, it cannot do anything. So it's hellish experience. There's no such thing as hell and heaven, but it is a hellish experience. Yes. You know, regret, penyesalan, and all that. that Now I don't have the tool with whom, with which I can uh, do some corrections, and so he suffers, she suffers for at least thirty more years, according to the life span that he has to spend, and then comes the decision what to do, what not to do, and born again. Of course, there is no such thing that they are not born again; they can be born again, but through that process, after that process. So I think it's the what the Deepak Bhaiyas was mm -hmm. saying that um, you know praying to the one who have uh, you know that. How about that? Yeah. yeah. So this is the role of the prayers True. and all that. So True. when the people is hovering and the soul was in, in this that stage of you know in the middle of and uh, they're feeling regretful yes. yeah in yeah. the transition mm -hmm. because like their their time is not up. Mm -hmm. So and now they're. Uh, you know, regretting, and mm. they need tools and all that. So this is the you know the role of the prayers from yes. the people around him to make him like release all the release the pain, release the grief. Okay, now I have to go through it. I go through it. You know. Yes. And uh, it can help in that in that particular life also in that during that transit transitional period, mm -hmm. it can help. It can affect our mind. It can talk to our mind. Yes. Without our knowledge. So that we don't make the same mistake that she or he has made. Thank you very much, Guruji. Yeah. 
So this is the last question, Guruji. Yeah, for today. There for be, today. This is with this sixth one, is it? No, this is the seventh question. This is seven, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, what is your viewpoint on the difficult things happening in life where we have little influence? For example, seriously ill small children not being able to conceive children or vice versa, having children accidentally, close relative dying tragically. What is the role of karma here? How should we understand this? All karma is the, the child who is handicapped, born handicapped, for instance. I'm just giving one example. A child who is born handicapped, we look at it, we just look at one episode, mm -hmm. okay? And we say this child has done bad karma, mm -hmm. and that's why he's born handicapped. Okay, that is true. But being handicapped, he is not going to add some more karmas. Mm -hmm. So, by not adding some more karmas, he's actually, you know, going through the past karmas, paying for all the debts mm -hmm. in a faster way. Mm -hmm. So, actually for that soul, being handicapped is good. Mm -hmm. But when we are just looking at it, mm -hmm. we think it is bad. Yeah. Now, what is our role? That is his karma. Mm -hmm. He is born handicapped, the child is born handicapped. That is his karma. Mm -hmm. He is going through it, his karma. What is my role? My role is to serve him. Mm -hmm. So I cannot, I cannot like, you know, stand on a ground that, okay, he's passing through the karma, he's paying for his karma, why should I help him? Mm -hmm. And by helping him, I will uh, spoil him or something, you know, instead of that, I should keep quiet. No. His karma is his karma. My karma is when I realize that he's suffering on yeah. whatever account. It is karmic account or any account. If he's suffering, then it's my duty to serve him. To serve him in any manner we can. That is my karma and that benefit comes to me. So, we have to be very clear about that. People suffer due to their karma. Me. If I can do something about it, I still do it. That is my karma. Miscarriage, not being able to conceive a child, is it bad? No. There are people who are born, there are people with children and the children are, you know, they, they wished, they have told me, their parents who have told me, I wish I didn't have any child. This child is so reckless, so ruthless. So, it's not that Someone who doesn't have a child, bad karma or something, maybe he's being saved from bad karma. We just look at one episode and we make decision, we make judgment. This is this, this, this. We have to see the whole picture. But why should we even see the whole picture? We do whatever we can do to relieve somebody from pain. There's a beautiful song in Hindi. Even if I can bring a smile on someone's lips, I will feel my life is fulfilled already. If I can save somebody who has fallen, I feel my life is fulfilled already. So that should be our tagline, not to judge others. I think we still have time. Let's try to continue. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so eighth question is um, how to treat a person, close relative, who has lost all interest, he does not enjoy his life and he is addicted to alcohol. Mm -hmm. What is the connection to karma here and how should we act as close relative? Or same, time? same, same, uh, same question, same answer that I gave earlier. We should try to make him understand whether close relative or not close. Yes. If it is only close relative and so I want to help, it simply means I am attached to this person and that is uh, not good. Whether it is close relative or not close relative, I should try to help. But let me not play God. Uh -huh. Everybody has his own karma to work out. So I do my job. I try to make him realize. I try to, if he needs a medical support, take him to doctor. He needs psychological support, take him to psychologist. Most of these questions, the solution is meditation. Yeah. But some people, they don't meditate. What can you do? You cannot play God. Continue with the second uh, Ninth question. Yeah. 
how efficiently Effect- effectively sorry mm, yeah. how effectively to show people who are unwilling to practice or feel that meditation mantras and other activities from the ashram are not their part how to best show them their dharma and possibly accept acceptance of karma or working with karma to be kind and yet help guide them towards their path if they are seeking it. I think these all questions are intertwined, interrelated. Yes. We should not play God, you know. Mm-hmm. If somebody does not like meditation, does not like mantra, does not like... That means he is into different school of thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah? We should not force. We should never force. Because we have a school, okay? This this ashram is a one school. I'm not saying they're the best. No, there are so many. Yes. Okay. If somebody is not uh, into this kind of school, why should I try to force? He has the freedom to find another school that is best. Maybe he can be helped by a psychologist. He doesn't want to work with uh, meditation on his own. Maybe he wants to have a uh, medical support. Mm-hmm. So let him do it, let her do it, you know. And uh, there's no such thing that uh, his dharma or whatever. Dharma is something very high. I mean, we should, next time we should talk about dharma. Mm-hmm. Dharma is not just duty. In English language, it is considered as duty. Mm-hmm. But dharma is not duty. Dharma is about collective consciousness. Dharma is about doing something for the betterment of the entire society. Dharma is something that is translated in Bhagavad Gita as Loka Samgra, for the benefit and the welfare of all. So it's not something like my dharma or your dharma. Our dharma is one. Your duties, kartavya in Sanskrit, is different. My kartavya is different. Maybe they are same. Maybe. Maybe. Most of the time it's different. Most of the time it's different. My kartavya, my duty for my children, for instance, if they are grown up already, is different. If my children are still small, it's different. And, uh, you know, similarly, my duty towards my parents, different. So duties can be different and that they can change. My duty towards my parents at this age, different. Later age, different. Before this, different. This, this is changeable. But when you talk about dharma, dharma is only one. There is no such thing as two dharmas or three dharmas. We will discuss about that later. The tenth question, last one. The last one. How to handle a situation where you are being judged at legal court, legal, yeah. uh, legal court knowing you are innocent, yet the person who condemns you is dear to you and you don't want to trial the trial to fail, leading them to suffer consequences. How do you approach this? Is it possible to accept guilt you don't feel, even if you haven't committed the act, yet still you cannot bear the per- other person will have to take the consequences of failing the child? If you can forgive, you forgive. But if somebody has taken you to the legal court, you face it. This is what Krishna was telling Arjuna. That you have tried, okay, you lost your kingdom. You lost your kingdom because of all play. Okay, your mistake or their mistake, but you kept your promise. You went for exile for 12 years, 13 years, and now you're back. And you're supposed to get your kingdom back. But if you're not getting your kingdom back and you have to fight for it, for self-defense, you should fight for it. If you had to go to legal court, then you have to go to legal court. So, I think we have to, this is duty. This is not karma, this is duty. When you are taken to legal court, that that is your duty. You are duty bound to face it. Mm You are duty bound to face it. So, it depends on where you stand. You know, there is a beautiful Zen story where a girl who is being, uh, who, who is pregnant and who was you know, somebody made her pregnant and and she came to the ashram and I forgot the name, Sundari or something. And she would come to Buddha's room. Buddha was in the hut and she would be passing through Buddha's hut every, every evening just to 
and to make sure that people look at her. And then after some time, she said that I am pregnant and Buddha has made me pregnant. So everybody got uh, got shocked. How can Buddha do something, something like that? You know, and Buddha was just quiet because his dharma is different. He is not related to this. And he said, if people want to leave this sangha, it's all right. I don't have to defend myself. But that is Buddha. <laughs> that is Buddha. You see, Mahatma Gandhi, when he was being being put in the jail, he fought his case. Nelson Mandela fought his case. All these great people, they fought his case. So, I think we have to be very clear. Where is our dharma? We have not reached the stage of Buddha. We have to fight for it. We have to face it. Face it gently, without hatred. But since you have been dragged to the core, then you must face it. But most probably, the important thing is that we have to fight for the truth. Yeah, yes, just, yes. If, if you are you not believe, guilty. Yes. If you are guilty, then you also face you face it. it. Also you uh, face it. Face it, face it but also cases. you have to accept it, yes. that you have yes. been wrong. Yes, yes. But if you are not guilty, then you have to stand for uh, mm. the truth. Or what in both done. cases, you face it. Mm -hmm. You are guilty, you face it. You are not guilty, you face it. It is responsibility of yeah. you. There is kartavya. There is response. There is our duty. Mm -hmm. So, I think we have come to the end mm -hmm. of the session today. And thank you so much, first of all, Guruji, for giving the time to answer all the questions. And I believe that everyone here learned a very you know new lesson also because like, even though you've been talking about uh, karma all this time, it's not your first time, maybe, but um, you still, we learn something new every day, every time we listen to you. Oh, greetings to Petra and Dr. Anna, who are coordinating the center there. Dr. Anna was here also in Bali last year, I think, and they did a great job, I think. Mm -hmm. I feel strongly because they came here and they decided that yes. we should have a center and within a matter of weeks after they went back to to Czech Republic, within a matter of few weeks they already started a center with just seven, eight people. Now I understand that many more people are coming and mm -hmm. some people are even saying that this has become part of our life, you know. Mm -hmm. When we don't come for the meeting, mm -hmm. we feel something is missing in our life. So thank you once again, Petra. You have done a good job. God bless you. And also Dr. Anna, who is uh, helping Petra also, I understand. I cannot mention all your names one by one, but my greetings, my love and blessings to all of you. Thank you very much for our brothers and sisters there. So I think you will be soonly going to the Czech Republic. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> to and meet Petra. all the <laughs> Yeah. No, it depends on Petra and Anna, okay? <laughs> and uh, and so the congregation, sorry. the Sangha there. <laughs> okay, so um, I think that's all for today. Um, thank you very much once again and hope that uh, please forgive me for any, you know, shortcomings that I have done. So we'll be ending this session with a bhajan, Krishna bhajan by Budevi. Thank you. Yes, this. Radha Krishna Karuna Lola Radhe Govinda. 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 Radhe Govinda Murali Govinda. Radhe Govinda Murali Govinda. Radhe Govinda. Radhe Govinda Murali Govinda Radhe Govinda Murali Govinda Radhe 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 Radhe Govinda Murali Govinda Radha Krishna Karuna Lola Radhe Govinda Radha Krishna Karuna Lola Radhe Govinda 
राधे गोविंदा मुरली गोविंदा राधे गोविंदा मुरली गोविंदा राधे 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 राधे गोविंदा मुरली गोविंदा राधा कृष्ण करुणा लोला राधे गोविंदा के सी अगेन सो थैंक यू बाय